And we're talking with Dr. Hazel Denning, Ph.D., and the, the book is called True Hauntings, Spirits with a Purpose. I, I like the title. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Now, um, I have to mention this. I mean, I hope you don't mind, but uh, I, I, one thing that was pointed out to me is that you're 89 years young. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and uh, I just find it fascinating. The, the, the book, I've, I've been reading the book, and... Um, I've really been fascinated with it because it's it's answered a lot of questions for me too. Now you, you are actually one of the um, a true ghostbuster, so to speak. Well, yes, I I really don't like that term ghostbuster, but that 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 says it. Okay, well, because you know people ask you to come in their house and and not really get rid of a ghost, but um, um, well, find yes, that that they they do want me to get rid of. Okay, it. okay. And uh, one of the, the the people in the book, uh, Gertrude, was that the name? That's one of them, yes. Okay, yeah, she, a psychic that you use. Uh, do you still use her quite often, or, or no? No, not anymore. We did this for about 10 or 12 years, and uh, I just didn't want to do it anymore. But when we did this a number of years ago, people didn't even believe it. You know, I mean, they thought it was made up. They thought it was fake. They, they said there's no such thing as ghosts. And, and I got tired of that, so I just decided not to do it anymore. Oh, really? Just because of all the people not well, believing in it, or not just that, but you know, you do something for a while, and then you'd like to do something else. Okay, now I, I know you've been on uh, quite a few shows, like Oprah and Joan Rivers, and a few a few other ones like that, right? Yes. And talking about it. Now, do you do you still lecture? And and uh, uh, yes, I still lecture. I don't lecture on that subject very often. See, my 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 uh, thing really is past life regression therapy. And uh, the purpose of that, of course, is to help people solve their problems. And that's what I'm more interested in now. Okay. All right. Now, um, with the book, the the, uh, the name of it is called True Hauntings and, and, and Spirit with a Purpose. Now, spirits with a purpose, you want to explain that a little bit? Um, yes. If there's a reason for spirits to hang around a building or a, or a house or people, uh, they there's a reason for them to do that. And so part of the book, the first part of the book, explains why spirits hang around houses. There are different reasons. Sometimes they stay around the house because they're afraid to leave. Um, it's interesting. I discovered that, that spirits, uh, when they die, or when people die, if they've not lived a good life, if they've done some bad things, often feel that if they leave the place, they will go to hell. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, our culture teaches that if you're bad, you're going to go to hell. And so people... Some people believe that, so they hang around because they feel safe. Others hang around because they want to help the people they left. Others hang around because they are waiting for somebody. Quite often an older person, for instance, will wait around until their spouse dies, and then they go off together. So there are different reasons why they hang around a place. Okay, you know, I, I, I've experienced a few different things. I've never really come in contact with a so-called ghosts. I've always been interested, but uh, I had an aunt that uh, lived in Wisconsin that always talked about the ghost in her house, and there was a story in there I was reading, and it had it was similar to that because she she, she used to have a rocking chair that uh, if she put it right by the window in a certain place, it would always start rocking on its own. If she moved anywhere else, it wouldn't do that. Yes, oh yes. And there was a story in there that I was reading that uh, that said it was a, a uh, I guess it was a rocking chair by a fireplace. And then every time somebody sat in that chair by the fireplace, they felt uncomfortable, and that was because there was a ghost that wanted to sit there at that time in front of the fireplace. That's right. Okay, now, can you explain a little bit of how, how you um, uh, rid the house of ghosts? Well, there's a formula that's very simple, and it seems to be used by almost all ghostbusters that I know. Um, to tell the person to go to the light. And to go to the light simply means that they move on and are aware of being in the other dimension where there are, there are other spirits there that will help them. And so the purpose of, uh, our purpose really is to liberate spirits when we work in this field uh, because they are earthbound, what we call earthbound. And, uh, you know, I think it's interesting. I think that the Catholic uh, purgatory, this is the... Um, same area as what the Catholics call purgatory. Okay, and limbo, some yeah. There are some spirits are afraid to leave, uh, and so they hang around the earth. And, and, of course, some hang around because they're angry, and they want to get even with people that are here. For some reason, if they have an enemy or someone they don't like, they'll, they'll uh, make it very unpleasant for that person. Okay, okay. And uh, there was one story I was reading where this uh, a ghost um, 
was stay with a woman because she was very unhappy and the ghost was trying to make her happy. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was little Rebecca. Uh, her, name was, her name had been Rebecca when she was on the earth. And uh, she had worked as a medium, or she had worked as a channel with this woman who was a medium. And uh, the woman had a husband who was very ill, and so she was very unhappy. He was, he was um, ill and large and grumpy, and she had to take care of him at home. And so her life was pretty unhappy, and so little Rebecca stayed around her. Supposedly, she said, to make her happy. Okay, and you said eventually in your book, you said that eventually she finally, the woman was happy enough where she decided she could go to the the other side. Yeah, the, the woman's husband died, and uh, and so she began to travel and enjoy life. And, and it was interesting because when I, when I talked to Rebecca, uh, now I say I talked to her, I talked to her, but I couldn't hear her. But my psychic that I worked with could hear her, and so they would tell me what she said. And I told her well, at one point to... Uh, to go to the light, and she said, no, no, I have to stay and keep Rebecca happy. But finally, after the husband died, she, she decided that she would go to the light. But one time she said, I took your advice, and now I'm taking piano lessons over here. <laughs> I had told her that she should improve herself and not just stay earthbound. Huh, huh. Now, you know, um, my mother-in-law might not like this, but I remember she, she always told me a story about um, when uh, when she was young and her, and her, and her brother uh, passed away in the in, in the war, that she had seen him. He had come to her um, before or after he died and whatever, and she found out yet the next day that he had you know been killed in the war. Now th that that happens quite often, right? Before when somebody dies, they come to the. I mean, I'm, there was a story I was reading about the, a gentleman coming to his wife and saying he's sorry he had to leave her and the kids, and she found out that he had died in the war or something like that. Uh, yes, and at the moment of death, quite often. Uh, the soul will come back to the person that they're leaving and tell them. I've had many, many, many people tell me that they knew when another person died that was close to them. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they just suddenly realized, just knew that that person was dead, and then they get the word that they were. Yeah, yeah, because I, I know when, when my mother passed away, um, I remember getting, getting called on the phone saying that she had taken a turn for the worse, but th through the month of the time that she was dying, you know, they always said that when they called up. And I didn't think anything of it. When I when I went to wake my father up to let him know that we were going to go, you know, go to the hospital, he drove extremely slow. So I think he might have had one of those experiences too, but he didn't say anything because I think he, he already knew. Oh yes. And, yeah. Yeah. And but also, you know, you may not always see the person, but there's a knowing. When my son died, um, right after he died, I was getting a meal in the kitchen, and I felt his presence, and I didn't see anything, and I didn't hear anything, but it was so real that I spontaneously said, well, hi, son, how are you? And I felt as if he said to me, Mom, I want you to know how happy I am to be free. Huh. Because he was into drugs and doing a lot of stuff that he shouldn't do. And he wasn't a bad soul. And so he was uh, he left because he wanted not to do that anymore. Now, when you, when you say that about uh, people staying on earth because they felt like they're, they aren't worthy or ready to go to heaven, um, do you feel that that's... I'm, I'm not trying to get into religious side here, but I'm saying, do you feel that people feel that hell is kind of on earth? They got to stay here on earth, and they aren't they aren't allowed up there, or what? Well, see, I don't believe in a place called hell. I mm -hmm. think that hell is a state of being, and you can be in hell when you're still living in a body on earth. When life is <laughs> when life is really tough, right? And uh, so, and when you go to the other side, the same is true. You're in a you're in hell if you're really miserable and unhappy, and you're in heaven if you're if you're happy. Okay. Okay. Now, um, Halloween. Do you think that's a? Is that any bigger of a night for spirits? I mean, I know I know it's a big night for witches and stuff like that. But I mean, is that a, is that a bigger night for spirits that you know of? Or you know, I really don't know that. Uh, they say it is, and they say that spirits are are uh, around and more active on Halloween. I have never seen any evidence that that is exactly true. I think that the reason it is is because people are celebrating that time, and so they they become aware of it, and they they plan on, on activities that that uh, foster it, you know. Uh -huh. But I don't know that the that the spirits feel that there's any difference. Do, do you see what I mean? Right. I see what you mean. Now you've been you've been doing this for for what sixty five years? Well, I've been in this field for that long, but okay. I have. But it was only about ten or twelve years that I did ghost busting. Okay. The rest of the time, I've investigated paranormal activity, 
and uh, been interested in this field, yes. Now, um, have you written any other books besides uh, the no, uh, True I Huntings? Did, well, I've, I've written a monograph about uh, regression therapy. Uh, we had a, a man gave me over a quarter of a million dollars to do a research project to prove, if I could, that the mind could heal the body of anything, a physical body of anything. Uh-huh. In other words, whatever illness you had, you could cure with your mind. And we had real success with that program. We, we did a three-year uh, study, we saw people for three years, then we did five years follow-up. And then I spent about five or six years putting it all together and, and writing up this uh, monograph. So I have that. And then I wrote... Uh, Oh, I've written an awful lot of stuff for magazines and articles and newsletters and things of that sort. But I, I'm almost finished with my second book. But my second book is on guilt because I think that guilt is one of the worst things that our civilization suffers. And so many, many people are guilty about stuff that isn't important enough to be guilty about. Now, how, how do you, you know get... what I mean by that? Yeah, well, not, well, not, why don't you explain that? Elaborate on that a little bit. Um, okay, there are two kinds of guilt, two main kinds of guilt. One we call trait guilt, and the other we call cultural guilt. And the cultural guilt are the should and shouldn't. You know, you shouldn't do this taboos about things that are stupid. Okay. And the uh, trait guilt is what you bring with you. And so when people feel guilt, come, when people come into this life and they've been really bad in the past, they bring guilt with them. And then they, their life is very miserable because if a person comes into this life feeling guilty, then they're not worthy of love and acceptance and success, and so many, many unpleasant things happen to them. Now, when you, when you say they come into the life with, with guilt, are you saying from being uh, reborn again? or yes, from doing something in the past that's okay. bad. Okay, okay. Th- that's... Uh, for instance, I had one case where this man felt he had been a slave runner in the past, and so he, when he was just a small child, he was always doing things that would make him be punished, and if his mother didn't punish him, he'd say, punish me, what are you trying to do, spoil me? <laughs> he, he never felt worthy of being loved and, and you know, cared for. He, he felt that he had to pay for something. Okay, so do you think, you think a lot of people, um, a lot of these different things that are, are, are involved with your life, you feel that it came from a, another life? Absolutely. Huh. Uh, this, uh, this, I've had 30, about 38 years experience doing past life regression, and um, I've listened to thousands and thousands of hours of people having recalling their past life and explain the problem in this one. Okay, do, do you do you still have any any uh, ghost-busting calls at all anymore? Or? Well, I do. I, I have um, a fair amount, but I refer them to somebody else. You see, we have other people who do this. There are two people, for instance. There are a lot of people in Los Angeles area, but I know two quite well, and I refer people to them. Okay, all right. Um, is there any common haunting sites at all that you know of, or...? Are there, are, I mean, why, why do some, some ghosts stay at certain places just because of the certain thing that happened to them there? Or? Well, usually that's the reason they stay, yes. One of the real quickies that I had that was fascinating was a doctor friend who um, had, had a friend with a, a big old house, and everybody that slept in a certain bedroom said that at midnight a ghost came in and scared the daylight out of them. And so <laughs> they, um, my friend said, well, I'm not afraid of ghosts. I'll sleep in that room see what happened. So he did. And sure enough, at midnight, this man appeared before him and held his hands over his face, threatening me. And he said, my friend said, what do you want? Why are you doing this to people? And the man said, I was killed in this house and my body is buried in the basement. And I can't, my spirit is restless. I, I need a decent Christian burial. And now, of course, that was his belief system, you see. And so uh-huh. he couldn't rest. And so sure enough, he told them exactly where he was buried in the basement. They found his body and gave him a burial, and then there was no more hauntings. Huh. So, you, now, what about that? Do you think people should not be afraid of ghosts? They should just, you know, just take them on head on and try to find out their problem? Or? Well, that's right. You know, really, spirits, spirits do hurt people sometimes, but very rarely. Mostly, um, they, they're just wanting attention. They're wanting to let people know they're still living. They're wanting help of some kind. And so... Um, the, they, they don't hurt you. I mean, when I could make, when I could help people not be afraid, then we could nearly always free their house. It's, it's the fear. Fear is such a powerful energy that fear dra- attracts these, um, these activities often. Okay, now do you, do you have to be psychic, though, to speak to these ghosts? Or, I mean, have some kind of a, 
ability to... Yeah, you do, sort of. To, uh, I couldn't communicate with them. See, these two women that I worked with were very, very sensitive. And when we'd go into a house, the spirits would say to them, how come you can talk to us and nobody else can? Oh, okay. Because they could actually communicate just like you and I are communicating. Huh. Huh. Yeah, that's... <laughs> now, um... Is this pretty new to you? Pardon? Is this pretty new to you? Pretty new to me? Well, I, I've been interested in a lot of this uh, this stuff for a long time, but I've never really... Um, investigated? No, I never really investigated, and I never really uh, heard it approached the way that you, appro- you, you approach it, as far as... Because you, know. you do have well, one story in your book that, uh, okay, when, when a uh, ghost was violent, was uh, two sisters that have died and, and tossed their sister, the living sister, and broke her arm or something, or... Yes, yes, and that is possible. Okay, so that there are a few of the, the bad ghosts out there, too. Yeah. They, they aren't all Caspers. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because um, so many people, particularly fundamental religions, say this is the work of the devil and the devil does all this. In all the years that I've worked, I've never found a devil. All the entities that I've, that I've found, all the problems that I've found, have been people, uh, spirits from people who died who were bad people. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, um, how many people have you have you dealt with that have been possessed, so to speak? Oh, I've never counted them. Okay. There are many. Yeah. Yeah. This is you know this is very common because there's spirits around all the time, and uh, particularly, for instance, I mean, just one one group are alcoholics, and it's extremely difficult for alcoholics because they are many many times they are possessed by people who died who were alcoholics, and so they are constantly impressed to drink more. Huh. Now, um, the, 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 the possessed people, that that has nothing to do with the work of the devil or anything either, or just the people no, that won't leave? No, and... again, in that same field, I simply found spirits, dead, or, uh, people who were dead, and their spirits were, were um, harassing. That's one of the reasons why some spirits stay near the earth, is because they are angry at somebody, and they're wanting to get even, and so they make life very miserable for them. Okay. Okay. Um, I've got about 50 more questions, but I'm going to ask just a couple more because we're kind of running out of time. But um, I was reading one thing about now Harvey, <laughs> the spirit in the radio station. Since I'm here at a radio station, we always had a, a thing here. I forget the name of the spirit that's supposedly supposed to haunt our uh, WKBZ here, but... Uh, now, this Harvey, this uh, spirit that uh, haunted a radio station, what, what was what was that all about? How did you get rid of him? Do you remember that one? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> yeah, he was. He he told us that the reason he was staying there was because his son disappeared, or, or I mean, his his son went to war and didn't come back, and he was positive that his son was still alive. They told him his son was dead, but he didn't believe it, and so told us that he had to stay there so that he'd be there when his son returned. And, of course, it was kind of silly because um, so this had been a number of years, and he, he was now dead. But when we investigated it, we found that that had been a, a duplex before it was a radio station. Oh, okay. And so there was, and so that's when, it, when he had lived there, you see, he was waiting for his son to return. But Harvey was, it was he was an interesting fellow because... Um, I asked him why he did this stuff to scare people, and he said, well, do you realize how boring it is to just sit around and do nothing? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I would imagine that would be being left on Earth to do nothing. You have to have a little fun, right? Right, right. Okay. He, he really did have, he made cassettes fly through the air, and <laughs> he, of course, scared people. Okay, because we're, we're supposed to have a ghost. I haven't seen any activity here for a, for a while, but uh, supposedly we had a ghost that uh, lived here at WKBZ. So did it, he manifest? It, or how did he manifest? Uh, it's it's a story, but I, I'm not sure of the story anymore. I, I, it's been a long time since I, we, we've talked about it, but uh, I'll have to find out from uh, when we have our, anniver- our 70th anniversary about the uh, story of the ghost here at uh, KBZ. Maybe I, now that I talk to you, maybe I can we can we can rid him. But like I say, I haven't seen him lately, so I don't know. Maybe well, he already took of the, off. One of, the, one of the things we liked about this story at the radio station was that I took my tape recorder along, and he made a noise for me on cue five times. I I said, "Will you make a noise for me so I can have it on the tape?" And he said, "He said sure." So he did. And then uh, I said again to be sure, and, he, and I asked him five times to make this noise, and he did it every time. Huh. I, I remember reading one story in there too, where you had uh, the lady that would not let you record. You tried to record, and oh yeah, that was a very interesting one. 
because uh, I started to turn the tape recorder on and it wouldn't it wouldn't record. And um, so then the lady that we in whose house we were the house we were investigating, the lady went and got her tape recorder and it wouldn't record either. And uh, then I took out a pad and pencil and the, and the spirit said, "What's she doing? I don't want her writing down anything about me." And uh, when it was all over, the tape recorder worked fine. Okay. All right. Well, once once she left, once she went into the yes. The spirit uh, world or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she didn't. She, she was a, a woman who lived as a recluse in the house in the neighborhood, and uh, she was very an unsavory character. The kids were all afraid of her, <laughs> and she was just kind of mean. Okay. Now, how, how many how many audio tapes do you have on all this stuff? I mean, you could actually re uh, release a a haunting uh, Halloween tape. I would imagine, could you? Yeah, no, I don't have any anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, I um, actually I have hundreds of tapes, and I have I suppose I have that one someplace, but I have no idea where it is. Okay, okay. Well, I, I appreciate I appreciate talking to you, uh, Doctor Hazel Denning, Ph.D. Uh, uh, and the and, and you know that the book can be ordered through. Um, you just call one eight hundred the Moon. Right. And it's Llewellyn Publishing Company. And uh, I was also told it was at Barnes & Noble, too, so they can pick it up right here in, in Muskegon oh, over yeah. at Barnes & Noble. But the book is called True Haunting Spirits with a Purpose, and uh, I've, I've enjoyed the book so far. I haven't had a chance to read the whole thing, but I've, I've enjoyed what I've read so far, and uh, I appreciate talking to you. Well, you're welcome. What, what station is this? This is WKBZ in Muskegon, Michigan. Oh, in Muskegon, Michigan. Muskegon, well, Michigan. I live in Michigan. Did you? Yes. Was there many ghosts in Michigan? I don't know. I was just a child then. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep up the good work, and uh, I, like I say, I appreciate talking to you. Thank you very well, much. It's been nice talking to you. And Here's take take care. Bye. Happy Halloween. Thank you.